folks, my name is Joey. I'm a crafter, 3D printer, and a collector of model trains. And I'm going to show you how I build a variety of different things. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to finish the model that we did in part one. If you haven't seen that, there's a link in the description. This video is about how to slice a model for multicolor printing on a single hot end printer. To start this, I'm going to open up Cura and drag in the model that I have made. I'm going to make sure I have the hatchbox orange selected because that's the first color that I'm going to be using for this project. Now when I go to slice this model, it won't let me print this because it's too large for the build plate because of the skirt. The skirt is plastic that is extruded before the print actually happens. The skirt serves a purpose because it helps you prime the extruder and establish a smooth flow of filament. Also it allows you to adjust the leveling and adhesion issues before the model actually begins printing. A brim is a type of 3D printing raft that is only attached to the outer edge of the print and is not beneath it like a raft. It also helps in bed adhesion and to prevent warping. It also can be thought as a type of skirt that touches the edge of the print. A 3D printed raft is basically a throwaway horizontal surface that sits underneath your object. It's made up of a predetermined number of layers with a specific infill percentage that extends a specific distance away from the sides of your object. The primary purpose of a raft is to help with bed adhesion. Now we're going to fix these settings to work with my model. I'm going to open up the settings drop down menu and I like to be in the advanced settings. Since this is only meant to be viewed from the front angle, I am going to be printing this at 0.4 millimeters instead of 0.2 millimeters with a 10% infill so it prints faster. Then so I could slice the model, I remove the skirt. Now I'm going to hit slice and this will show you what your model will look like and how many layers it will be and how long it will take. The reason why it went from orange to yellow is because I have it set on layer thicknesses, not material colors. I will explain what this is used for in another video. Now I'm going to rotate the model so I can see it from the top view and then I am going to scroll down to see all the layers and to figure out where I need to put the pause in each layer to do the color change. So I calculated layer 6 for yellow, layer 9 for red, layer 11 for black, layer 22 for blue but then I realized that was supposed to be layer 23 you'll see that later in the video and layer 25 for black. But now we're going to have to tell Kira to pause at these stops. To do this we're going to go to Extensions, Post Processing, Modify G-Code. Then once that opens up you're going to go to the drop down of Add Script and you're going to go to Filament Change and then you're going to type in the number of what layer you want to change at. Once you've added a Post Processing Script to Kira it'll always be in there until you remove it. Once you put post-processing into Cura, there will be a button in the bottom corner next to the word slice to show you that there's post-processing in the model and it's an easier way to access post-processing without going down to the drop-down menu. Now that I have done all the filament changes, I'm going to the drop-down and going to experimental and make it change the temperature of the nozzle at every layer change so they're the correct temperature for each plastic. I had five changes in my print. But you could do as many as you want as long as the model accepts that. Process interrupted. Emergency in layer one. Emergency in layer one. I started this project off with Hatchbox Orange, and then I switched to Amazon Basics Yellow and Red from the variety pack. They sell a variety pack of 22 50 gram spools of every PLA they make. Then I switched to a normal roll of Amazon Basics black PLA and then to 
more Amazon Basics Blue PLA from the Variety Pack. I really do love this Variety Pack. I got to sample all the filaments they make. I liked all of them except for the gold because it looked more of like a silk yellow than gold to me. And then the wood infill because I was getting inconsistent layers with it. When you go on Amazon's website and they have it in stock, they, you could see in their new variety pack that they got rid of the wood fill entirely. They don't even make any more wood fill. And they redid their gold to look more like actual gold. I wanted seven colors, but I did not have any gray in stock, so I decided I'm gonna simplify my design and all the gray spots will be black. Until now, the print was mostly going good, until I realized I sliced the LCD screen at the wrong layer. So the last layer would have been black instead of blue. So I had to pause the print, bring up the temperature to 220, and keep the bed temperature to 70 degrees, and then I exchanged the filaments back to the blue. But then, like an idiot, I forgot to purge the black out. But as you can see, the black purge into the blue. Again, I had to manually pause the machine, change the film into black to finish the project. The only problem with this method is that you never know how long each color will take. I thought there would be a way to calculate this in Cura, so I asked a friend that's good with math to help me with this. But I will talk about this the outcome of this in another video. For some reason at the end of the video the camera glitched and recorded a pause for the rest of the length of the video. In the camera app WISE there is a way to access an unaltered video of what you wanted of the whole length of time and you could record as much as you would like of that on time lapse. And I tried accessing that and the same thing happened. Here are two pictures of what the print looked like after it was finished. And the last picture is my first attempt at this project that did not go well. And please like and subscribe.